Hello again, I'm Chirag and in this video, let's look into designing and customizing SharePoint lists. Once you create the list based on a particular list template, you design the list by adding metadata to it. In other words, by adding list columns. Then you can optionally customize that list using list forms, list views and list settings. When you create a list in SharePoint, SharePoint provisions default list forms that allows you to perform basic list operations like add, edit and read list items. You can also customize these forms later also. Using list views, you can slice and dice all the data stored in the list so that you don't have to read all the data at once all the time. List view also gives you to perform on-demand filtering, shorting and grouping of the list items. All these list settings are exposed via ribbon and list settings page and allows you to control all types of list customizations and behaviors. Let's see how this goes in demo. While adding a new column to list or modifying an existing column, you have option to choose column types and specify settings exposed by that column to it. On top of that, you can apply custom validation to that column using column validation formula. So here I have um, one custom list created called states with this columns added. Um, if I examine these columns, um, the title column is the default one because this is a custom list. Then I added an abbreviation column. And here you can see that this single line of text column actually has settings. Um, this column contains information is required. So I have set it up to yes. And then I can also enforce unique values to it. That means no two records can have duplicate values. And then maximum number of characters are allowed. For single line of text, 255 is the maximum limit. So if I try to uh, increase more than that, it actually won't allow me to do that. So let's leave it to 255 right now. Now you can see that the abbreviation uh, I'm expecting only two characters in this field. So I can enforce uh, two characters right from here. But I, I also want to show you how custom validation works. So let's leave it to 255. And then here I can enforce a custom formula here. So I'm using this length function. And then I'm putting, uh, and, and this is a, this is a syntax for all the co uh, column validation formulas. Um, and then we say is equal to true. And then you can put a message. State abbreviations should be only in only two letters. So any message that that you want to uh, show to the user uh, upon successful uh, unsuccessful validation. So if I click OK, so now I have this validation here. So if I go to states and let's say I'm, I want to modify this item. And now you can see that I have a, a abbreviation column here and I'm just typing more than one character. You can see that here it says state abbreviation should be only two letters, right? So, so this is how you actually perform custom validation formulas. Um, another way. Um, so let's see another uh, column here, notes, which is multiple line of, lines of text here. So let's see how that looks. So click the notes. Now you can see that when I select the type multiple lines of text, right, uh, the unique enforcement of values is setting that is gone here. So that means that setting is not actually supported by this type of column. Another thing here, note, uh, another uh, important thing to note here is you cannot convert, once you specify multiple lines of text column, you cannot convert back to single line of text. So let's see what, what I meant by that statement. So if I go to abbreviation, See, you can, you can also convert this to multiple lines of text or choice or currency or even date and time. Of course, you will lose the data you have already, right? So, but you can do this. Um, so this is one of the other features of SharePoint where um, you can change your column type. 
uh, it's better to actually specify correctly in the first place so and in a multiple lines of text you can also choose oh I want to I want to allow users to only put plain text I don't want to give them ability to put pictures and tables or hyperlinks so you can uh, achieve that by this particular setting here um, we will look into it later in a uh, this in a detail in a later videos so for now I'm actually clicking OK here and um, for this demo I have added few records to it uh, from Wikipedia so I want to show you the list forms so as I mentioned earlier that SharePoint automatically provisions few forms when you create a list so the first form is the view item so when you click this view item link you can see that it's just a plain simple form showing all the all the data for that particular record if you want to edit the edit the edit any records here you click this button and say edit and it will SharePoint will give you a new form called edit edit form here with all these forms fills and then you can modify the data into it uh, also notice the address bar here so this is the edit form and this is my list states and let's look at the view form so here you can see that the name of the form is actually called this form dot ASPX so that means and and here also you can see the third form is the read items so this is a view actually so let me open another slide here so you have the list forms one called add new item so add new item will appear by adding this form so this is add new item then edit item which I showed you and read item so three forms and then if you want to show multiple items you actually use views so this page is actually the fourth form list views uh, we will talk about list views in just a moment uh, document libraries actually has an, a, one uh, additional form which is upload form uh, so let's say if I go to share documents and then if I click new or upload button here uh, it actually uh, shows me this form which is upload upload page um, so this is the only difference between the document library and regular lists now let's look at how the list view works a SharePoint list view is just a projection to list columns and list items here I have a states list uh, showed as a table here I have six columns into it and then a few records uh, into it now my goal is here to only select a few columns from this list and then few records from this list so how can I do that so I have written this query here show all states where population is greater than uh, 500,000 and only show name capital and population fills in this particular view let's see how that that's actually works so here I have this list now I already have all items view here and then I can either modify this view or create a new view so so if I click modify this view I, I'm actually modifying all items view here and I can actually change the name and and how the, the address bar uh, link also so let's create a, another view create a view and then I am I'm actually choosing this here so this particular uh, page gives you actually option to what you want to do and uh, you know what template you want to choose uh, so that as, as a starting point to your new view so you can either choose standard view you can choose calendar view data sheet view and also you can choose from all of your pre-created views here so let's just create select all items here in this particular case and let's say population uh, threshold view now I also mentioned that uh, you can also personalize your view so this particular uh, sec section here gives you ability to create a personal view what that meant is a personal view only you can um, access that view nobody else while a public view is a shared view means when you create it 
um, everybody has access to that view. We will look into this uh, later videos. So let's just go by public view. And then you can see here, uh, this is a column section. That means you project what columns appear in your view. So for this, I don't want to show them the nodes. Also, I don't want to uh, see abbreviation column here. Um, and then you can also put sorting here. So let's say I want to actually sort everything by um, title column. So here, I'm, here is my title column. And I say show items in ascending order. I want to do that. And then here is the filter. So this is where you actually put a list item projection. So let's filter. Now, I want to actually uh, filter by population. And it says is equal to. So I want to say um, greater than or equal to 500,000. OK, uh, we will look into this settings in a little bit later. Uh, let's click OK. Um, and you can see now um, here is my new view, population threshold view. I have title, year of statehood, capital and population um, column and uh, only three records because only three records are having a more population than 500,000. So you can see how list view actually gives you powerful ability to you know slice and dice all this data in your list this is especially very powerful feature uh, when you have lots and lots of data like more than 10,000 or more than 5,000 uh, you can also do pagination to it so um, we will also look into pagination in the later videos uh, and here another important feature I want to show you is the on-demand filtering so let's say I want to filter this uh, this view further uh, and you can see I only want to show uh, these two records, right? So you can see that I have only applied the filter here. So this is very, very important uh, feature, on-demand filtering. So uh, I have one record, two records are actually, see how that works. Here is two records are having the same value, year of statehood. Um, so let's see what happens. So if I select 1819, you can see here, two states are appearing from all items view. So you can easily see that how um, easy to filter the data once you add it to your SharePoint list using list views. Some of the now, some of the limitations for this are the columns. You can see that I, I, I cannot filter on notes column because notes column is a multiple lines of text field which doesn't allow filtering on demand filtering. So something to note here. Um, so now let's talk about list settings. So list settings are exposed uh, actually two ways. From the ribbon, you can see right now I'm in a states list and I can see this ribbon list here. And also you can access this particular page, list settings page, uh, which actually exposes all your list settings in a one single page. You can access, you can see that you have general settings you have settings for permissions and management. Uh, you have one settings for communication. And then you have this, this column section where you can uh, manage all of your list columns. Um, and then at, at the bottom of this page is the list view section where you can uh, see all of your list views. And you can also specify uh, and change default views for desktop, app, desktop mode and mobile mode also. And from here, you can also go to the same page, uh, create a view. So this is a list settings page. Um, some of the important uh, settings are here, list name, description, and navigation. So you can change the name of the list. Uh, you can put a description. You can even choose whether the list appears in the left navigation quick launch here uh, using this particular setting. Then you have versioning settings. You have advanced settings, validation settings also. So a lot of settings are here. Um, so basically, these are all the list settings. We will look into uh, each each one of these in the later videos. That's all. So um, the last uh, thing regarding this in, in this video is what are the best practices to create a list and list columns into it, right? So when you create a list, um, so let me give you one example of how you can. So let's create a one list. 
um, add an app and I'm just creating a custom list and say my list let's create it so now you can see I have a my list here so I'm just gonna copy the link and show you the best practice to it so here is a notepad and this is my link so see here the the address here my list so so this is person that 20 appears in your list so the best practice is to always create a list without spaces first and then add the space so that it only changes the title let me show you why so i'm creating another list here um, add an app custom list my list to um, let's say state capi capitals now i have a state capitals list so observe the the address bar there is no space there is no percentage 20 into this so you can see that in this particular list it was percentage 20 which is little bit uh, hard to read uh, here it is like that but then your list actually has no space in the title but you can change it so go to list settings and then go to here and then add the space here and then you have a state capitals but then without the address bar url is actually much more uh, human readable so this is one of the things i i would recommend to perform same thing applies to uh, columns as well so if you go go to st uh, states list and then um you know list settings look at the year of statehood so um you can see that here is a field this particular a field name and you can see that this is the name right so again uh, this is the internal representation of how SharePoint renames the list uh, list columns when you put space into the name uh, so the best practice is to add a, add a column let's say state uh, GDP so you can say without the space and then just create it and once you create this you can go again in the setting of that column and then put the spacing to it back what will happen so I'm just this is what will look into so now you can see the field you can compare the naming pattern that's it for this video thanks for listening bye